There have been some major new developments in combating aging using genetic engineering, and a lot of them have been very effective, and that's kind of the problem. And a number of them have come out of progeria research, which is also kind of a problem. What you see behind me is a face model for a child with progeria. This is a condition that causes rapid aging very early in life. The condition can vary between individuals, but many do not live into their second decade. Researchers have found that we all undergo a genetic aging program, so these genes become active later in life for a purpose. They just cause problems when they're active too early. I will say part of this is theorized to be because you are supposed to not live forever. As in, the next generation has to come around eventually. There's also a certain trade-off with genetic instability. We are supposed to have mutations so that our offspring have a chance at surviving changing conditions. Otherwise, you'd be an alligator. Also, alligators may not age, but they do eventually accumulate enough damage over time. Theoretically, they could live forever. In practice, it doesn't happen. Let's get into it. You can have genes turned on and off in order to prevent aging, and that has been seen. A lot of the research around it has been around stem cells. You can take a cell outside of your body and turn it back into an embryonic stem cell, and then it can become anything. This can also be done in vivo, which may not be the best idea because it can also turn into other stuff like a teratoma. A teratoma is when your cells try to become a person, but just do not make it. Don't look at pictures or do. For example, you can turn on the genes that would otherwise turn your cells into an embryonic stem cell while it's in your body, and apparently it's really helped with aging in the brain. You can also toss exosomes at aging, and it seems to help too. Exosomes are little packages of information that get tossed around your body and do stuff. For a while, people weren't totally sure what they do, and we're still not totally sure. I mean, you can fill them with stuff and send them around the cells. It works. They may actually be a pretty good way of genetically engineering stuff. I mean, viruses were used for the longest time. This might give people less creeps knowing that we actually do make exosomes. Incidentally, it is believed that exosomes are the origin of eukaryotic viruses. Just a little piece of aberrant DNA got out and it got weird. The real problem with anti-aging research is that there are so many causes of aging, so many different genes. If it were just one that could be turned on and off, they'd probably already have a human treatment. Because there are so many, no one's entirely sure where to start or what is going to be the most effective thing to do. Yes, a lot of this research does come out of progeria research. It's also unlikely that it will ever get to the point of helping children. There's a few reasons for that. It is very difficult to bring a medication to the market. We have seen more of it lately, but it's tough. And for a lot of the gene editing treatments we've seen, it's a single gene involved. It would take a whole lot of money to get this stuff to market. And if somebody does put down that money, chances are it's going to go to anti-aging treatments, not the kids. All I would like for more, you can always count on me to bring you weird science. I am sorry so much of it is depressing.